Hey everybody, Merry Christmas. My name is Russell and I'm the pastor of the church at Dwell. Um, I am recording this sermon just to give each of us an opportunity to pause and remember why we celebrate Christmas. Uh, It can be really easy to get distracted by all the busyness and excitement um, and kind of forget why we're doing all of this in the first place. And so uh, I hope that this can be maybe a 30 minutes or so to to pause and and maybe hear uh, the Christmas story and a little bit of what I feel like God teaches us through His Word and what we learn from the Christmas story. Um, my uh, my hope and w- what it is that I'm going to be talking about today is uh, is how do we know God? Um, but uh, to kind of start our time to jump in uh, to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, as I said, my name is Russell. I'm 29. I'll be 30 in January. I've been married for five and a half years to my beautiful wife, Megan. We have one son uh, who is one year old. And uh, maybe a fun fact about me is that I love punk rock, punk hardcore music. Uh, It's always been something I love that not everybody understands, but um, it's uh, it's a good time. You should check it out. Anyway, so, so I, I say all that to, to really just make a point, really. is So y- you now know a little bit about me, but that doesn't mean that you know me. See, there's, there's a big difference between knowing about someone and knowing someone. See, we, we, we know about people all the time. I mean, uh, if you have a favorite, a favorite artist or actress or actor or writer, director, whatever it is, uh, you can know a whole lot about that person. Um, You know, for me, it's like I I don't mind getting on YouTube and just looking at interviews from like Leonardo DiCaprio because he's the man and he makes awesome movies and I can learn a ton of facts about his life and, you know, we can follow these people that we admire on Instagram and we can just continue to gather more and more information about them. Uh, to the point that we even begin to feel as though we know them. See, but but knowing about someone and knowing someone is a very different thing. Um, but what is the difference between knowing and knowing about someone? So I, I think that to know someone, it has at least these three main ingredients. The 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 most important ingredient is this, though, to, to know someone it is relational. And by relational, I mean that um, to know someone, you must be known in return, right? It, it is a back and forth. It is both. You know me and I know you. That's what it is to know someone. I think the, the next component is authenticity. It means like having a real conversation with somebody. Um, for example, if you were to go to a party and were to have uh, a conversation with somebody there about the weather, then you walked away from that party not really knowing that person. But if you were to go to a party and you met somebody and you started talking about your dreams and your hopes and your desires or what you like or dislike, then, then I feel like you walk away from that party having um, known that person and, and been known by that person. I think uh, one of the last ingredients, I don't think that this is essential for knowing someone, but there is levels of knowing someone. We all have different levels of relationship. And so uh, this one is experience, going through something with someone. I think that we see this oftentimes in military, that uh, people that go uh, and serve overseas, that they uh, end up creating this bond with one another. I mean, band of brothers is like a whole term because um, when, when you experience something, especially something difficult with another person, um, it, it creates a new level of knowing someone. So those, those are some of the things I think that are essential uh, for knowing. But what does any of this have to do with Christmas? I think that's a good question. What does any of this have to do with Christmas? In a second, we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 2. 
And whenever we look at this Christmas story that we've probably read a hundred times, um, I believe that we can kind of see what God has done in order to know us and be in relationship with us. And I also feel like in this story, we, we see the steps that are necessary for us to enter into relationship with God, to know God. And so if you guys want to follow along in your Bible, I'm, uh, again, I'm looking at Luke chapter 2. I'm starting in verse 1 and reading to verse 21. Um, I'm just going to take a sip of water and then we'll read. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. A decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be... This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor over Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. But he was of the house of... The because he was of the line of the house of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Verse 8. And in the same region there were shepherds, out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in a swaddling cloth and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angel went away from them into heaven and the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby laying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. And it had been told to them. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. This is the word of God. All right. So, um, in this passage, what we see is that um, uh, Joseph and Mary are, are going back to Joseph's hometown because he's being um, called there because there's a census, which is all about taxation, and you've got to go and get registered there. And uh, as him and and his uh, fiance is, are traveling, or they get there, they get to the town, and Mary is, starts to go into labor. Uh, there's no place for them to sleep in an inn, and so they end up uh, getting moved into a manger, and that's where she gives birth, and she uh, wraps Jesus in a swaddling cloth. And then we see that an angel of the shepherds and tells them, hey, we bring you good news of great joy. Good news of great joy. A Savior has been born to you. And they worship God. And then after the angels disappear, the, the shepherds uh, look at one another and they say, man, we got to go and we got to see this thing that has been told to us. And so they go and they find Jesus. And then they end up telling everybody what it is that they've seen. So, um, whenever we look at this and we think about Jesus, you know, what do we learn about Jesus? What do we learn about God from this passage? Um, 
how is it that God was trying to get to know us? What do we, how do we see that in this passage? And, and for me, I, I think what just stood out to me was the fact that Jesus came as a baby. I mean, God could have just as well just kind of like materialized out of nowhere as a grown man and begun his uh, ministry as sort of this mystery person that's shown up. Um, but that's not what he did. What he did was uh, he came as a newborn child. Which, and if he were to come as a baby, then that means that, that he was uh, weak and needy and vulnerable, that he would be hungry and tired and he would experience pain and joy and all of the wonderful parts of life. He experienced all of that. And I think that this is crazy because that means that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords stepped down from his throne and entered into the world so that he could experience what it is that we experience. Psalms 139 says this, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my laying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. See, I think that in this, what we see is that, that God actually already knew us. He, he knows our, our deepest and most intimate thoughts, and, and He knows every little detail about us. But He didn't want to just know about us. He, he wanted to know us, and, and for that to, to really fully happen we would need to enter into relationship with Him. It is uh, to, to know and be known. And so what God did was He made Himself accessible to people so that He could be known by us. He went through great lengths just so that we could enter into relationship with Him. It might sound dumb, but one of the things that comes to my mind is this movie Hitch with Will Smith. And uh, I didn't like look this up much, but I feel like I remember this scene where Will Smith is uh, is teaching um, somebody, some guy, um, how to kiss a woman, right? And he talks about how you have to you have to do you have to lean in eighty percent of the way and let her go the twenty percent, and that's like what qualifies as like a good kiss or how to approach a kiss or something like that, but. That's just the, the image that came to my mind is that, that God wanted to engage in relationship with us. And so what he did was he went the 80. Or honestly, like in the case of Jesus, he went, he went the 99. He went almost all the way so that all that we would need to do to engage with him is take that little step, that little lean, so we'd be able to engage with him in a new way. So how do we do that? How did, the, how did the shepherds do that? Whenever we look at this passage, I think that we're meant to kind of follow the example of these shepherds. See, the, the shepherds received the good news of great joy that, that a Savior had been born. They, they, uh, they were just in awe by all of this good news. And then after the angels disappeared, they said, let's go and let's see this thing that has been told to us. See, they didn't just stop at knowing about Jesus. They found out all this, this good news of great joy that a Savior had been born. They, they received the same good news that many of us have received. Right? That, that a Savior has been born. That God lives and that he loves us but they didn't want they didn't just want to hear good news about Jesus they wanted to know Jesus and so they moved they moved towards Jesus and they um, went to go find them so for me I just wonder a little bit about why is it that we don't always move towards relationship with God. I think that um, sometimes we end up getting stuck in the just knowing about Jesus and we're content there. But, but why don't we move towards Him? And 
There can be a multitude of reasons why. But just as I was praying about this and preparing for this talk, um, what came to my mind or what I feel like the Lord was telling me was um, that we just didn't know how to get there. Like we, they're like, we don't know how to get there, how to get into relationship with them. How do I have a relationship with an invisible God? Um, that can be hard to understand. We're not like, um, we're not like the shepherds, right? The, the shepherds here had very clear instructions. The angel said, uh, Jesus is in the town of David. He's in a manger and he's wrapped in swaddling cloth. It's like, you know where to look. Uh, the different locations to look and what he's going to look like when you find him, right? Like he had, they had step by step instructions to finding Jesus, to enter into relationship with him. But for us, I don't know that we feel like we've had that. I think we, if we look at Christians that have gone before us, um, that unfortunately many of them and many of us um, have only ever known about God and we don't know God personally. And we're, we're supposed to learn how to get there from the people that go before us. I think it's unfortunate. I, uh, as, a, as a chaplain or just a friend, I feel like I have heard time and time and time again, people communicate to me that they don't want anything to do with God or religion or Christianity because they looked around at the Christians in their life and they said, man, you talk about this God, but your life is not transformed at all by what you believe. I, there, there's just this disconnect between their, their knowledge about God and their relationship with God. And they're like, man, if that's what being a Christian looks like, then, then I'm out. I don't want anything to do with that. See, but the truth of the matter is this is that to know about God is just religion. But to know God personally is a relationship. And religion can be a very good and wonderful thing, but religion without relationship is worthless. It's worthless. So what does relationship with God even look like? How do we... How do we engage with that? How do we um, connect to God? I, I don't know that we even can fathom what relationship with God looks like. It can be hard to wrap our head around. See, we understand the value of, of friendship and of marriage and of a parent and a child. There's all these different relationships that we have in our life that it's easy for us to see that these things have value. But when we think about a relationship with God, we're not quite sure what value there is in that. And, and I don't blame anybody for that, but uh, I think that the, the, the truth of the matter is that like um, the comfort of a friend, the affection of a husband and a wife, the security of a father and its child, all of those wonderful things that come with your relationship with those people, if you were to wrap all of that up, and multiply it by a thousand, that's what can be found in relationship with God. My mind goes to uh, Romans chapter 1, where we see the Apostle Paul talking about how God reveals Himself through all of creation. We can see little bits of who He is and what He's made, but, but where we have fallen short, or, or what we have done oftentimes, is we've begun to worship or celebrate or value what was created rather than the Creator. We value these friendships and these partnerships and these parent sibling relationship or parent child relationships, but we don't value our relationship with God, even though it is. What, what we're seeing in those relationships is God, right? That's what we're seeing. See, I believe that, that all of those different relationships are actually just an imperfect reflection of the kind of relationship that we can have with God. 
whatever relationships you have that bring you joy and love, they are only a whisper of what is found in God. Um, there's this book called a severe, a severe Mercy, and the author talks about his relationship with his wife. He uh, was not a Christian when his, uh, he and his wife came together, and they um, very openly put like their love for one another above all else. They were like, it's going to be the most important thing to us. And um, the book kind of unpacks how that changes when they begin to enter into relationship with God and how that became more important than even their love for one another. In his book, he says this um, about love, right? And I think that, uh, forgive me, there's one uh, curse word in here, but I'm reading a quote, and so I feel comfortable with it. So the author says this, A man in the jungle at night may suppose a hyena's growl to be a lion's, but when he hears the lion's growl, he knows damn well it's a lion. See, I think that the answer to our question about what does relationship with God look like is that, right? Is that um, looks like whatever peace or love or joy is found in a relationship, it's just the growl of a hyena. And it's all that we've ever known. See, we just, we suppose that it is the greatest thing that we've ever experienced, but it's it's just a hazy reflection. It's just a whisper. It's just a crumb of what can be fully found and realized in the love of God, that, that roar of a lion. And when you experience it, you know exactly what it is. Maybe, for example, I, I used to be, uh, I was in a relationship when I was in like the ninth grade. And uh, I think most of us can kind of look back to our high school relationships and at times feel as though they were very silly. but for me, there was this girl that I dated for about nine months, and, and I mean, I loved her. I, I thought that she was amazing. I thought that, that what we had was something um, really beautiful and something that I desired. And whenever we broke up, man, I was crushed. I thought that, that it was going to ruin me. And I didn't think I'd ever be able to love anybody that way before again. Love that way again. But then, many years later, I met another girl named Megan. And when we began to fall in love, man, it wrecked me. It was the most amazing and wonderful thing that I had ever felt in my life. And, and whenever I looked at this love that I had for the woman that is now my wife, I, and I look back at what love I felt when I was in the ninth grade, it was just a crumb. It was nothing compared to the kind of love that I found in her. See, and I, and I think that that is the reflection of like, that, that's what we can find in our relationship with God. Whatever feels like the fullest or the height of love and affection you felt for another person, I guarantee you that it's just crumbs. It's just crumbs compared to the bread of life that is found in Jesus and in relationship with Him. So if you desire that, if you want that, how do we begin to take steps forward? How do we be like the shepherds and, and not just know about God, but, but move towards God? I want to know Him and I want to know this love. I think that the answer is that we should practice the presence of God. And maybe that's just a fancy way of saying that we should just spend time with Him. We just need to spend time with God. But how do we do that? I think I've got these three things I say that we need to move from. We need to move from thinking about God to thinking of God. Thinking about God to thinking of God. What does that mean? I think to think about God means to make 
judgments and assumptions of God that, that we might think that we know what God wants or why He does what He does or, or uh, about His character or His nature. We make these assumptions about Him and what it is that He desires. But we need to move from that to, to thinking of God. That means to, to consider Him. To consider Him in our life and in our decisions whenever we're looking at things and, or doing things in our life to say, man, what does God think about this? How does God feel about this? I don't want to just assume, but I want to be like, God, what, what is it that you desire? What is it that you want? What is it that you feel? And I think that, that we do that by knowing the heart of God a little bit better. And um, you know, Colossians chapter 1 says, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. And so for us, whenever we go to the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we can read through these and we see Jesus. And, and through Jesus, in Jesus, we see God's character and His heart and His nature. And the more familiar we get with this, with His life and His teachings, with who He really was, then we can begin to really consider, man, like, what is it that Jesus would be thinking or feeling in this moment? We consider Him. The next movement is this, that uh, we need to move from being around God to being with God. Many of us that have grown up in church, we, we kind of have this, this knowledge built into our mind that um, we believe that God is everywhere, right? That He is around us in spirit and that He's present. But that doesn't change or inform anything in our life because He's just around. Just another person in a crowded room. But what we need to do is to shift into to not just being around God, but move towards being with God. I think this just looks like invitation. What, what we do is we, we invite God into our day to participate in whatever it is that we're doing, whether we are sweeping the floors or going to work or caring for our children or, or spending time alone, just inviting God to be with you in those moments, acknowledging His presence. To acknowledge His presence alone makes a big difference in being around God and being with God. The last movement is this. I think we need to move from speaking to God to speaking with God. This is something that's really easy for any of us, especially um, me, right? I think all of us can get stuck in this um, is that when we pray, we just have these please and thank you prayers that all it really is is us talking to God. Um, thank you for this. Please do this. Please give me that. So how do we move out of that and, and enter into speaking with God? And I think it's like any other uh, relationship and any other conversation. We listen. I think we just need to be quiet sometimes and, and see what God wants to say to us. How often do we do that? I, I know that I'm guilty of oftentimes not giving God space to speak or to respond to me. So my encouragement for you guys is as you try to take one step forward into a relationship with God that hopefully you'd get done watching this video, and you would ask yourself the question, what's one step for me? What's one baby step towards relationship with God that I can take? That you would look at these and you would just maybe pick one thing. Right? So consider God, invite, invite God, or listen to God. So maybe you feel like, man, I, I want to just consider God more, and so the, the, the baby step for you is, I just want to read through the Gospels. I want to read through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And at the end, of, uh, something we do here as a church every Sunday, anytime that we're, we're reading through God's Word, um, we read it, and then we sit down, and we ask the question, what do I learn about God from this passage? What do I learn about Jesus? His heart. His nature. His character. So that we can begin to grow in our understanding of who He is and in any given situation, we can 
kind of look at life through that filter of, man, what would God think of this? What does God think of this? And how do I engage it in a way that honors Him and pleases Him and um, mimics the way that He does things? Or maybe um, you just need to uh, begin to invite God. I think that this can be very simple. Maybe the baby step for you is just to pray at the beginning of each day, God, will you just go with me? Will you go with me to work and help me? Will you go with me into this conversation I'm about to have that's going to be really difficult? Will you go with me to this party so that I would just honor you in all that I do? Just an invitation, a little prayer. God, go with me. And we'll begin to experience what it's like to be there and be with Him and just to acknowledge that He's present. And then lastly, uh, maybe the baby step for you is just to listen. Just to be silent from time to time. I think whether you are a person that walks from place to place or you drive from place to place, it can be really easy for us to fill that kind of time with noise. Uh, whether it's music or podcasts or you know this, that, and the other, it can be easy to, to uh, make that place just a place of entertainment rather than it being a place of uh, just connecting with God. I think that that is the perfect time for us to just be silent. And for me, whenever I'm getting in my car, one thing I love to do is not turn on the radio. So just be quiet and just you know start out my drive by saying, God, if you have anything to say to me, I ask that you would do it now. Just a time reserved. Be quiet. my encouragement is for you to take one of those baby steps. One of those baby steps. And I believe that if you begin to take a step towards Jesus, not just knowing about Him, because that's just religion. We don't really need any more of that. At least not by itself. But you're ready to step into relationship. Not only that, but the the fullness of love and joy and peace that is found in relationship with Him that honestly overshadows every other relationship that you've ever had. If you want that, you just got to take a little step and another little step a little later and then another step, right? We just continue to engage with God and cultivate this relationship It takes time just like anything else. When you're getting to know somebody and letting somebody get to know you, it it takes a little bit of time and effort. But just take one step, right? Tomorrow as you uh, open up your presence uh, with your family, just spend that time, just invite God into that time. Remember Him and the great lengths He went through to enter into relationship with you. That's all that I have to share with you guys today. Um, If uh, you don't know me and you've never uh, been a part of the church at Dwell, then we would love for you guys to join us. We meet uh, in the leasing office of Dwell at 750 uh, on Sunday evenings at 5 p.m. You guys are welcome to come anytime. Um, We would love to have you. I'll pray for us and we'll be done. Um, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much for um, sending your Son. I thank you for just going the the 99% of the way to, to enter into relationship with us, to engage with us, to know us and be known by us. Lord, I pray that you would just help each and every one of us to take whatever step is necessary to begin this relationship with you. Lord, any of us that maybe have been in relationship with you but begun to neglect our relationship with you, Lord, I pray that you would just help them to, um, to enter back into it, that they would just seek your face again, that they would delight in your love once again.
Lord, I pray that you would just keep all of our families safe and healthy over this Christmas holiday. Um, I pray that you would just continue to provide for us. Uh, and that we would just be satisfied by you. And I pray that each and every person that's watching this video would find um, a full and fulfilling life that is found in relationship with you. We love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks, guys.